Coming to you live from Usbrom Gymnasium inside the Lou Higgins Center on the campus of Baldwin Wallace University. It's time for Ohio Athletic Conference Wrestling Action as the 19th ranked Baldwin Wallace Yellow Jackets host OAC rival Heidelberg University in a key OAC dual matchup. Thank you for joining us this evening. I am Cade Mickley and I'm joined by Brian Stepp. We have a great broadcast for you on Slate tonight. Great seasons by both teams right now. Brian, right now, Baldwin Wallace will take on Heidelberg for an opportunity at its first outright wrestling uh, championship in a while. And even if they lose that, if, if they lose here tonight, they will share the title with either the winner of Mount Union and John Carroll. What do you think of tonight's matchup? I'm also interested in the 165 pound weight class as both wrestlers come in with pretty even records with Anthony Arario, the freshman for BW, having a 17 and five record, overall record, and the senior, Aaron Banco, with a 16 and nine record. Should make for an interesting match. There'll be several matches tonight that could be close. And every now and then you have a match that you're not expecting to be close and all of a sudden you find yourself in the third period with a one point difference. Yes, as you were saying, Baldwin Wallace completely dominated that match as we were broadcasting live. They just were clicking on all cylinders. A couple close matches with uh, some seniors that were plugged in late as it was senior night. And a uh, little change up to the lineup. But tonight should be interesting as Heidelberg tries to play spoiler. And of course, that's always a dangerous role when you have nothing else to lose and you have everything to gain by taking out the top dog in the conference. Yeah, it appears that Jake Landers will get the nod at 141 pound weight class tonight against Justin uh, Ken, the senior, with a 19 and 7 record and a perfect 4 0 in the OAC. Not really sure as Pat McGinnis, as the best of our knowledge, is healthy for tonight's matchup, but Jake Landers getting the nod instead. Obviously, earning that spot and having a great match last week. I agree. 
Well, we're going to take a short break, and when we come back, we are the starting lineups. You're listening to BW Wrestling on BWYellowJackets.com. Welcome back to wrestling on BWYellowJackets.com. I am Caden Mickley, joined by Brian Stepp. Let's take a look at the starting lineups. At the 125-pound weight class, Baum Wallace will start Chris Doyle, the sophomore out of Akron Green, who has a season record of 23 and 16, a 3 and 1 OAC record, and a career record of 41 and 31. He'll be going against Tyler Price, the senior from Heidelberg that has an 8-11 record, but enters the OAC with a 3-1 record. Yes, Jesse has fantastic stats. Great wrestler, great person, as he was just honored last week. Next at the 141 pound weight class is senior Jake Landers from Liberty Township, Lakota East, who has a 6 and 8 record. Uh, should be 1 and 0 in the OAC after last week and 23 and 44 career record. He'll be going against senior Justin Ken with a 19 and 7 record this season and a 4 and 0 in the OAC. This should be a tough matchup for Jake Landers, the senior, who has not got a ton of starting experience, but is making the most of it right now. Seven pounds. We have the true freshman Richie Burke out of Ithaca, New York, Ithaca High School, with a season record of 22 and 16 and OAC record of 3 and 0. Cuba going against senior Brian Brunner, who has a 4 and 4 season record and currently does not have an OAC match under his belt.
Yeah, it should be a great match with the true freshman against the senior. Anthony having a pretty good season currently, stepping in for the injured Dave Shapiro. At the 174 pound weight class is Garrett Chase, the senior at Erie PA Cathedral Prep. Garrett, another one of those seniors that has had a fantastic career going 123 and 35 for a career record. Currently this season, he's 27 and five and has a three and O OAC record. He will be facing freshman Darren Decker, who currently has a seven and seven career, uh, season record and is two and one in the OAC. Yes, that should be a great matchup. Ben started off strong last week in the first couple periods, but that second period, he was found on bottom a lot, really couldn't get out. I'm interested to see this week how he does come back in some action. And the 197 pound weight class, a sophomore, Tyler McClellan out of Medina CVCA High School, who has a 22 and 14 season record. It's three and zero in the OAC and has a career record of 38 and 21. He will face off against sophomore Gage Finnegan, who has an eight and 12 season record and is one and two in the OAC. Yes, currently right now the wrestlers are being announced and starting lineups as BW wrestlers are throwing shirts in the crowd. You can feel the excitement off of the BW bench and in the stands where the rest of the BW roster, wrestling roster sitting near Matt side with the gym being pretty full for uh, BW standards on nights like on a Tuesday night, yes. BW again looking for its first outright OAC championship since 1973. It's about high time. Pierce Coach Gibbs has these guys ready. The guys seem amped. I'm very, very ready for this thing to get underway, Brian. Yes, as we're about to witness the national anthem, we'll be right back.
Welcome back as we're about to get underway here at the 125 pound weight class. Again, Chris Doyle will face off against Tyler Price, the senior. Both sides ready to go as the wrestlers make their way to the center of the mat. Brian, what do you think is the key tonight for BW as a team? Yes, I agree as we're underway as both wrestlers being very aggressive with their hands right now. Tyler Price looking to use that fake shot and right away a lot of action going on in the center of the mat. As Chris Doyle has double underhooks, nice little trip right there. On the edge of the mat now. Yeah. Yeah, he Tyler was pretty close there a couple times from spinning around and taking that takedown, but Chris does a good job fighting that off. And nice shot by Chris. Hope to we'll see if he can finish here. Tyler doing a good job fighting it off, and he does fight off that shot. That's just a senior right there who's been through a lot of matches, a lot of practices, knowing what to do. Pace slowed down a little bit. The thing with BW tonight is you just hope they're not too amped up, which can sometimes be the case when you're trying to do something huge like they are right now and that's when an outright championship for the first time in over 20 over 25 years that is Chris is trying to just wear down Tyler with that constant head pressure from the front headlock position Nice little try duck under shot right there. Tyler doing a good job fighting it off. And this time Tyler shoots in somewhat deep. Chris doing a good job, fights it off. Tyler, uh, Chris tried a nice little slide by right there. Now has double underhooks again. Chris doing a really good job. Being very aggressive. Both wrestlers doing a good job being aggressive currently. Referee has to watch this as the knees being Tor uh, torqued in a way that could be potentially dangerous. Chris is trying to get that two. Referee has not singled two yet. Chris now with there's the two with about 40 seconds left to go in this first period. Yes, as Ryan time starts. It's huge for BW. It's always nice to start the night out with a takedown. Uh, a little over 25 seconds left to go in this first period. Both wrestlers on the edge of the mat right now. Yes, as Tyler's trying to... There's a stalling call on Chris. Referee not afraid to hit him with that. As a little bit of action, but Chris is just not really trying to work from the top position. Chris mounts. Looked like Tyler thought there was a false start, but no signal made. About five seconds left to go in the match. Chris can't give up an escape or reversal here, and it looks like he won't. It's close right there, Brian. That would have been huge for Tyler, but Chris did a good job of fighting it off. Yes, the lighter weight's usually a little bit more active than they are in the heavier weight classes. This time Chris switches size when he lines up, gives up the fast escape. But you'd think... Uh, Chris is feeling pretty confident on his feet right now, Brian. Currently no riding time advantage as Chris has 46 seconds built up. Needs at least 14 more for riding time to count. And again, Chris is in deep on a shot, but Tyler does a good job of getting his hips back and fighting it off. His knee, Chris tries a knee tip.
I would not be surprised if Tyler's hit with a stalling sometime soon as Chris is just here. Yes. Yes, taking the shots. There's Tyler's looking off that reshot, and there's a takedown. Chris doing a good job fighting, though. Great match so far. So both wrestlers looking to work their offense, and Tyler doing a good job at letting Chris bait himself into a shot. Chris almost out, just trying to, there he is. Match is tied at three apiece as Tyler is in on a shot again as Chris rolls him through with back points on top of it. That is huge, Brian. As Chris tries to build his riding time back up, currently sitting at 50 with 13 seconds left to go in this match, Chris should get the riding time advantage, barring a quick escape by Tyler. And there's the minute with one second left. Exciting second period as Tyler was looking for another takedown that would have put him up and gave him the edge and the momentum. But Chris does a great job rolling through that shot. Yeah, as Tyler is cutting into his riding time, making that not a factor currently. The thing with Tyler though is he needs some back points or to cut him and try to get a couple quick takedowns. And there's the escape. Making the score eight to three in favor of Chris Doyle, the sophomore now. Akron Green High School. Chris going back to work on that front headlock, just wearing down the senior price. Looks like Chris could hit an ankle pick from that position sometimes as he's standing up and letting Tyler stand up a little bit. Tyler's giving up those ankles, but Chris currently just wearing down Tyler. There's the snap down, trying to get it around for the two, and he should right there. 10 to three with about 48 seconds left in this match. As Chris is filling up his riding time again. Currently has a leg in, trying to work that power half, it looked like, with the senior Price fighting it off. Brian, if you're Price right now, what's going through your head? Yeah, that'd be great for Chris. And there's stalling on bottom on the on the uh, senior price as Chris is getting more back points right now. No, at this point, Price Price does not want pinned. That's the big thing. As there's about a second left, no pin. Plus the minute of Ryan time makes this final 16 to three. Oh, excuse me, they already took into account the writing time. It's 15 to three with the major decision. Way, uh, Baldwin Wall starting out very hot as senior Jesse Gunter faces Brandon Conrad in the 133 pound weight class. Jesse is the number two ranked 133 pounder in division three and a two time All-American. He is second all time in BW history with 112 wins, the two time national Wrestling Coaches Association Scholar All-American enters tonight's matchup at 26 and one. Oh, nice move by the sophomore Brandon Conrad. Trying to take advantage, both wrestlers just rolling through. Jesse has to be in constant contact as he has an impairment. Jesse 
Jesse's also on the dean's list. He had a 4.0 grade point average in the fall semester. Finished his degree requirements in education. Began a business degree with the intention of getting a master's in accounting degree by next spring. Yeah, Nobby would be a great guy to learn from for some of these younger guys coming in as they're taking a look. Maybe some blood time currently for Jesse. Sophomore Conrad cannot come in this match. Uh, skittish against rest, uh, wrestling, the number two ranked 133 pounder. It's tough not to. The kid's a, he's wrestling a senior that's 26 and one on the season. Has a, over 100 wins in his career here at BW. But if you're Brandon Conrad, you have to look at this as the opportunity to make a name for yourself and come out with a huge win. As they're still cleaning up blood. Not really sure. Yeah, it looks like cleaning. Make it a little slippery. And again, Conrad trying to those throw, and it works, and Jesse's on his back. Huge move. As we were saying, Brandon Conrad cannot be intimidated to come in this match, and he's not. It's a nice little fireman's carry as Jesse looks to escape. There he is. There's one. Neutral. Great move by the sophomore, Brandon Conrad. Go up in this match one to two early. Contact broken again. Here again, contact is broken. That would be the toughest part about wrestling somebody with the impairments that Jesse does have is the constant contact because obviously when you're trying to escape or any other type of move, sometimes contact's broken and you try to put distance between yourself and the other wrestler. The sophomore, Brandon Conrad, very flexible. As Jesse's trying to get in on shots, he's just able to turn his body away very quickly and almost use it to his advantage, taking advantage of uh, Jesse's aggressiveness. Jesse trying to take that front headlock, snap down, spin, not quite working how he wants it with about a minute left in this first period. Jesse's been in these situations before, Brian, so you have to think that he's not really too worried, except for now the sophomore Conrad's in on another shot. Jesse almost putting on the freshman on his back, and again, just rolling through that arm and coming up underneath. And almost coming out on top is the sophomore Conrad. And he's done that multiple times. And here we go again as Huddleberg's head coach had wanted to have a little discussion with the referee for tonight. About 30 seconds left to go in this first period. Jesse in on a shot finally. Looking for his first takedown. There it is. Making score 3 1 with about 21 seconds left in this first period, Brian. You had to think it was a matter of time for Jesse to get his offensive work. He's looking for a half with about seven seconds left to go. Try to get those back points. And Conrad. 
able to get an escape point with a second left. Jesse just got too high, and the sophomore took advantage of that. Jesse was awarded two back points, however, with a second left. Make score five to three. Yes, I'm very surprised at how well this sophomore is doing coming the season. I mean, into this match with a six and one record, facing the number two ranked wrestler in this weight class, and he's not scared or intimidated at all. He's coming right at Jesse and taking the match to him. Although Jesse does lead the match five to three. Yes, with a perfect three and one record. This sophomore has something to prove tonight. Start off the second period neutral. As Jesse fights off a shot and then is in on a nice little high crotch. Looking for a two. Jesse needs to get, break the hands. That should be two right there, making the score seven to three. And writing time now in favor of Jesse Gunter. No points yet for riding time as there's only 20 left, but Jesse's now on top and he's very tough on top. So for there, late in that first period where he got a little high, Brian, and Conrad almost was able to put Jesse on his back. Yes, he has. As Jesse's looking to look for a turn here. BW Bench is wanting a stalling call on bottom as Jesse is looking for a turn, looking for his offense on top. The sophomore Conrad has not really done a ton to escape to this point except for now where he's standing up. Jesse though taking him right back down on the mat with about 43 seconds left to go in this second period. Yes, as he finally has that all important one, minute, uh, one point of writing time that could be the key to a match in some cases. Jesse now on the edge of the mat looking to stay in as he does have the possibility for a tilt right here. Jesse knowing that if he does flip him over, he'll end up out of bounds. So he's changing up the lock on his tilt. Jesse's still on top, looking for that wrist control, and that is the end of the second period. Jesse definitely switching up his uh, his attack this period, coming out not more aggressive, but realizing that this sophomore does have a lot of hip strength and he's very quick with spinning out of out of uh, yeah, daunting I situations. I think that uh, Jesse realized he needed to slow down as he maybe was coming out a little bit too fast at the sophomore as the sophomore looks to let Jesse stand up. Giving him the eight to three advantage. Contact's broken again. Let's go to the center of the mat. Jesse has a minute 47 of riding time with about a minute 40 left to go in this match. So even if he is taken down and running out the rest of the match, he will not give up another point. Right time in. Jesse's the one doing the taking down, making the score ten to three. That was a that was a vicious slam right there. Yes, he was, but he stayed under control full time. Not making it a legal slam. At this point, I think Conrad's just looking not to give up the tech fall or the pin which could be huge in team points as BW currently leads team points four to zero. Jesse has to be careful going straight back like that, not to pin himself as we've seen it done before. If both shoulders are on the mat, it doesn't matter if you're in control on top, that you can pin yourself and it has been done before. Jesse's looking for that half, just trying to get some back points here. The freshman Conrad, just not giving up anything as Jesse let him get too high and there's a reversal 
making the score 10 to five with 30 seconds left as Conrad kicks out Jesse, making the score 11 to five. This, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead, go ahead, Brian. I was gonna say, this sophomore's reversal skills are, are, are impressive. Yes, Jesse's been a little sloppy this match, getting too high and forcing some things. I wasn't so sure, it looked like the referee awarded two back points, but I don't think I see any on the scoreboard. The sophomore looking for another throw, looking for those fireman carries and outside shots. And Jesse gets another two. Make score 13 to five. With two minutes and 49 seconds of riding time for Jesse Gunter. That makes it a second major decision for tonight. Keeping him undefeated in the OAC at 4-0. And great way to end his in-conference uh, in wrestling. Yes, this is the last match to hear for all these senior wrestlers for EW. Great to see Jesse go out on top. As we come up with another senior, Jake Landers, the senior out of uh, Lakota East. He is 6-8 on the season, 1-0 oh in the conference, and 23-44 and in his career. Looking to finish off his senior year with a W. Yes. Last, last week we had a match where it was a very close match between Jake and his opponent from Ohio Northern. Jake pulling the, up, the uh, win out in the last seconds on a takedown, giving up an early takedown here. Jake Landers is wrestling the senior Justin Kinn, who has a 19-7 and record and is a perfect 4-0 in the OAC. So a tough task ahead of him right now, Brian. Yes, it is. Again, the team scores eight to nothing in favor of BW, and last week they just came off of blanking a hot northern, 41 to nothing in the team score. So BW, very conscious of that, and so is Heidelberg. Not wanting to get blanked themselves in the team score, looking for a couple wins. And they might get one here with a tough senior that's undefeated in this conference. Yes, we have a great senior battle as we're, as we're watching. The senior Ken looking to build a minute of riding time as he's approaching 50 seconds right now, with about a minute 53 left to go in this mat in this first period. Excuse me. Not a ton of action now. No, Jake just trying to, to keep hand control and maybe spring out and get a point. And there he does just that. Wing scored one to two. Jake looks a little bit more lanky than his opponent, Justin Kin, but he's it looks like he's giving up some muscle mass. Brian, what do you make of that? Uh, as we saw last week, Jake is Jake uses uh, his height to his advantage with um, keeping hand control at a distance and staying low at the same time with his height. As he uses that reach, his longer reach, his longer legs to his advantage on top. Sometimes it's tough to stop a shot of someone that can reach farther than uh, you can grab him from. Yeah, especially when you go to sprawl, their legs are, are farther and longer than uh, an opponent that is not as tall. Yeah, just like that, Jake does a good job sprawling with about 40 seconds left to go in this, in this first period. Haven't really seen any offense from Jake right now as he is taken down again. Nice little single leg trip by the senior Justin Kinn. About 20 seconds left to go in this first period as the senior Justin Ken has over a minute 25 seconds of riding time. So Jake Landers finds himself in a hole. Looks like he'll be going in the second period down four to one. Jake will be on top, trying to look to use his those long legs to his advantage, maybe throw in the boots. Look for a turn here. 
and cut into that riding time that Ken has built up. But right away, Ken is able to get that escape. They score five to one. As Jake's headgear falls off, they have to go back up into a neutral position as he secures it. But she had that problem last that last week, if I don't if I recall right. Yes, there's a few times the headgear was a, an issue for some of the wrestlers. But Jake has to feel a sense of urgency right now. Down one to five. Haven't really seen a whole lot of offense out of Jake right uh, currently, Brian. It's all been defensive, and because of that, he finds himself in a hole. And again, he gives up another shot as Justin Ken is quick around that corner, looking for that outside single and two points. Yeah, Justin's Justin's shots have been have been pretty on point for, so far for today. Yeah, it's just very smooth coming in, nice little setup, little tap and go, just outside shots. Which you would expect from a senior with the experience and knowing when to take them and how to set them up. Correct. As Ken has over two minutes of riding time now. Jake has had the confidence. I mean, he's a senior. He knows not to get rattled in, in any wrestling match. It can change on a dime. Somehow you can find yourself with your opponent on his back and just, just need that pin, and that's all that matters. He's going to need to look for a pen soon because we're about to hit that 35-second mark in the second period, yes. He needs to cut it in this lead somehow. A takedown yes. here would be huge, making it a three-point match. As Jake looked for offense, and then Ken looked for that reshot. Now Jake's just doing everything he can not to give up another takedown, as he does right there. Makes the score 2-9. to nine. About five seconds left to go in the second period. That is where the score will stand. Two to nine with Justin Ken having two minutes and 23 seconds of riding time. So in reality, the score is two to 10. Brian, a tough hole for Jake to get out of, but he will try to cut into that with one point right here with a quick escape. Then he will have to go on the offensive. No choice, look for those big moves or tons of quick takedowns. This is going to have to start with him getting out and getting that one point to, to get up into a neutral position to start his attack. Jake will look to do just that as he's trying to get that hand control, trying to get that little sit out. Or maybe even a reversal right here to get two. Justin Ken staying in good position, his hips back, his weight forward, maybe a little high, but he has that sense of when to get his hips back as he has that leg trapped between his two legs now. About a minute 25 left to go in this third period. It's going to be very tough for Jake to get out. At this point, Jake, with approaching just a minute left in this match, needs just to do everything right now. He can try rolling, Granby rolls, anything, sit out, switch, standing switch, anything he can to do, give himself any type of spark. But still, Justin Ken is doing a great job on top. Just not giving up anything. I don't know if he's really looked for a turn, Brian. I'm, I'm a little surprised that there's no stalling that's been awarded either way. No. There is the stalling on bottom on Jake Lander. With about 20 seconds left to go in this match. Which is definitely not the time for Jake to be stalling. He needs to make a, a quick move and look for the pin. Jake needs to do something now. About 11 seconds left to go in this match. A little too little too late for anything at this point because he waited way too long. And Justin Kinn did a good job on top, not giving him any room to do anything. And that will be the match, 10 to two. 
Justin Kinn doing a great job on top just that whole third period. As we go into the 140, or I'm sorry, 149, we have Joey Schmidt, the senior from Hinkley, wrestled at Brunswick High School, and Kendall Newell, the sophomore. Joey Schmidt goes into this into this match with an 18 and 8 career, uh, season record, two and one in the OAC, and 80 and 55 in the season or in his career. Sorry about that. That 80 career wins makes Joey Schmidt the 16th all time in wins here at BW. He joins Jesse Gunter, Garrett Chase, Ben LeBron, and Joe Belford, and injured senior 165 pounder David Shapiro as four year starters for the Jackets. It's great to have all that experience just on one team alone. Exactly, is, as Schmidt gets a takedown right there early in this match. Again, with that experience, it just translated into the season with having 17 victories, looking for 18 yes. in OEC title. And that experience trickles down to the younger guys, too, to hopefully build upon the foundation that they've laid. As BW leads the team score 8-4 to four after giving up that four-point major decision the last match. Joe Schmidt looking for a turn here against Kendall Newell, the sophomore that has a record of 10 and 7 this season. Joey's just doing a great job in keeping him flat and controlling the legs and building up upon his riding time almost at one minute. Yes, already. Looking for a turn at the same time, though, trying to get that wrist control, maybe put it on his back. Not really sure what Joey's trying to run. Currently, but he does have a minute of riding time now. Joey's still looking for some sort of movement, some sort of turn on top as Newell is doing, surprised he has not been hit with the stalling maybe. I haven't really seen him do a whole lot from the bottom position trying to stand up. No. But at the same time, Schmidt has done a great job of preventing anything. If you're BW, Brian, how do you react to that loss, that last match? Uh, Short-term memory, really focus on this one and get right back on the track, being up eight, eight to four. It's there's still plenty of plenty of other matches to go within this. I agree. You can't really look to one match and say this is the turning point. You have to forget it. Go out there and wrestle your match, and that's why wrestling is such a great sport. Because while it is team scores, it's all about the individual out there at the mat, and you have no one really to blame but yourself. As Schmidt will go out of this first period leading two to zero with two minutes and 33 seconds of riding time build up. As Newell defers, Schmidt will go on bottom. Right away, Schmidt looks for a quick stand up, maybe switch right there. Newell did a good job on top, cutting into that riding time. But like I said, there's over two minutes of riding time still. It's going to be really tough to cut into all that riding time this period. As the sophomore Newell gets a leg in, though, make things a little bit easier in that regard to cut into that riding time. Almost with the same strategy as as uh, as Joey, just keeping them flat and working on top, limiting the opportunity for reversals or just standing up and getting out. Exactly. As Joey had a couple quick early movements, so it looked like he was going to get out. But the senior has plenty of experience, knows what he's doing. Still looking for something on bottom as he, as he is working. Continually get it back to his base. Just Newell does a great job breaking him back down with under a minute left. Oh, Joey looking for a switch. He's almost had it right there as he has that foot. He's now he's just straightening out that leg, trying to get his legs out. 
not quite able to get it as Newell does a good job defending, staying on top, cutting in that right time as there's only a minute nine left that Joey had built up. About 26 seconds left to go in the second period. And now the sophomore Newell cut completely into that riding time. And now there is no advantage. As Joe Schmidt has been ridden out on top, it appears, this whole second period. While he hasn't given up any points, Brian, it's huge that he did not get out. And now it's Newell's decision to pick. And he will choose top, where he just did a, did a fantastic job on top. Smart choice, because they both have been very dominant on top. Whoever yeah. has been on top, they've kind of driven the force for the period. Exactly. I, I had forgotten about how well Schmidt was just doing on top before. But looking at that last period, I think Newell's coaches were thinking, as Joey tries a quick sit out, and he's up. That one point is huge, making it 3-0. Yes, it is. But a big five-point move would put Newell back on top with a minute 43 left to go in this match. You'd like to see Joe just go at him like he did. He got that original takedown very early in the first period and was able to ride out Schmidt. I mean, Newell, excuse me, for the rest of the match, or period. But both wrestlers should be a little bit more tired. Schmidt just going a whole period of being written out just takes a lot of energy out of you. And the same for Newell, the period before that, going almost a whole period where he was on the bottom position. As Joe looks like he has that arm bar looking for a uh, trip or a single with under 50 seconds left to go in this match. Yes, Newell's going to need to get a takedown or something to really cut in that three points and make this his match. Yes, but at the same time, you'd like to see Schmidt be a little bit more aggressive on offense. Not too much where you put yourself in a bad position just to build on that lead, making me make this a major decision. As Schmidt is able to get in on a shot, but they go out of bounds. Both wrestlers doing a great job staying low, going into the third period. It's a lot of time with wrestling, you know, very exhausting. Yes, it is. It just takes a lot out of you trying to lift someone the same body weight as you, have them be on top of you for periods of time. And as, we, as we've seen, there's no stalling call, so it's not e neither wrestler has been trying to take a, a breather. As Joey takes this one, 3-0, with 27 seconds of riding time in his direction. Yes, and that makes... His team scores are now 11-4 as we get ready to go in the 165 pound weight class. That's freshman Anthony Herrero takes on senior Aaron, oh, excuse me, sorry, getting ahead of myself. The 157 pound weight class where freshman Richie Burke out of Ithaca, New York will take on Brian Burnt, senior Brian Brunner. A little upperclassman, lower classman. And right away, Richie Burke in on a shot and straight to his back. No points given. The freshman commanding straight yes. off the bat, he has making a, it his match. Potentially dangerous one point for Heidelberg. Maybe Richie didn't have an arm in between there. And now the freshman just stalking, coming in, getting that wrist control, looking for that arm. Richie earned the starting nod this season over last year's starter, Junior Graham Monahue. Richie's 3-0 in the OAC matches and has won 11 of his last 14 matches. He's one of two freshmen in the starting lineups and tops the team in total near falls this season with a single season school record of 91. 
very impressive for a freshman who has a bright future for this BW program. Yes, yeah, so some great seniors that have been there to, to teach them what a successful program is, how it's ran, how it's built. Exactly. As she's been looking for some points after he did have Brian Brunner on his back, but no points were awarded as he neither wrestler was there long enough. As Richie loses his headgear right there. Plenty of people here tonight for this wrestling matchup. Haven't seen this gym this full in a while for a wrestling match. Great to see everyone here tonight. We'd like to thank you all for coming. For those of you listening, BW leads the team scores 11 to 4. Richie Burke currently trails 1 to 0 in the first period after having a potentially dangerous call go against him. Both wrestlers just pressuring into each other back and forth. Neither with a real advantage right now. Under a minute left in this first period. Surprised Richie hasn't been a little bit more aggressive after that initial series of movement. As he tries a hip toss right there. No points were awarded. You can hear the frustration coming from the crowd after that call. Yes, as they thought he was able to keep a toe in for a little bit. But the referee says no. We continue to match. As Brunner's trying to do some. Changing the level to step his shot. Not quite there. Richie not really falling for it with about 10 seconds left to go in this first period. I'd like to have seen Richie use his length to his advantage to get a couple takedowns or attempts on takedowns. But he hasn't. As he tries another throw a roll right there, but Brunner does a good job defending, but neither are giving up any points. Going this second period now. Brunner chooses down. But the freshman, very lengthy, very good on top. As I said earlier, he has a single season school record of 91 near falls. So you know he knows how to get those points when he is on top. Currently, he's too high. Doing a good job of scrambling both wrestlers right now. As Brunner has his leg, Richie just trying not to give up a reversal. Doing a good job at getting his arms around his hips. Just keeping his hips going with it as he stays on top. Great job. Not sure how he pulled that one out. No, that was very intense. A lot of fighting back and forth. Now Richie going for his cradle series, which is lethal. And he has it right now looking for that pin, which would be huge if he gets it. The freshman. The senior is shocked right now. The senior is shocked. The freshman does a great job getting the crowd into it. Great pin. As we said, he lead the team, he led the team and has a single season school record of 91 near fall. So you know he's lethal on top. And last week we saw how good he is with his cradle series. Actually, all series all season we've seen it. The, the student section's gone ecstatic, especially on a Tuesday night. It's packed and loving that. Oh yeah. Everyone here excited for an outright championship for BW, something that we haven't really had in too many sports lately. We've been competitive, we've been there, but this is the first team that's put itself in this position. As we have another mm -hmm. freshman, Anthony Arario, giving him a quick takedown to senior Aaron Banco, who's 16 and nine and two and two in the OAC. As Anthony now looks to get that reversal. As he pulls up on that leg after having so much pressure on his head. Anthony doing a great job his freshman year, just as well as Richie, which is very difficult to come into a, a program that is that is completely brand new to you your freshman year, and making a name for yourself, getting on the starting lineup, 
and really playing a role in that lineup with a 42-0 victory last week. Exactly. As Anthony got that escape after that pin that last uh, match, the score is now 17 to four in favor of BW. As Anthony Arario was trying to look to help to put that a little bit more out of reach. Anthony gave up that quick takedown. But so far, not a lot has happened since then. About a minute 52 left to go in, the sec in this first period. Anthony just as capable as Richie Burke getting a quick pin as we saw last week in the first period. He just went straight from a takedown to a pin in his match against Ohio Northern. So we know he is lethal. Both promising freshmen. Yes. Anthony steps in for David Shapiro. Unfortunately, the BW senior and four-year starter at 165 pounds is injured and out for the season. David finished his career with 104 wins against 40 losses in his career, including a single season school record 40 victories as a sophomore when he was an NCAA Division III national qualifier. Our thoughts go out to David. It's a tough way to go out on your senior year, but a great career, a great career nonetheless. Anthony doing a great job blocking off that shot and keeping pressure on the on uh, his opponent's upper half. About 37 seconds left to go in this first period. Anthony's still trailing two to one after that quick takedown, looking for his own takedown. But the senior, Aaron Banco, who's having a pretty good season himself, doing a good job fighting that off. Under 10 seconds left to go now. Both wrestlers just still in the middle of the match, waiting for the other one to make a mistake or make a move. We'll go in the second period now. Anthony will go bottom with Aaron Banco on top. Look for that quick escape, even not the score. But Aaron doing a good job of preventing that from happening. Aaron Banco looking for some back points right now. Trying that power half. Anthony thinking he's a little too high, pulling him forward. Looking for the opportunity to switch or get up and get that point to even it up. I think that moment may be gone now for Anthony that was too high. No, maybe not as the reversal is right there. Now the score is three to two. Anthony himself too high. Has to be careful. Looking for a power half as the official call is potentially dangerous. Heidelberg's coach filled with rage right now. Both coaches now talking to the rest, uh, referee is Coach Pat Rizzi is over there first. Coach Gibbs goes over to talk. Coach Gibbs appears to said you can't do that as he's walking away to uh, Anthony. No point was awarded either way right there, but Anthony's still on top as we restart action. About a minute left in the second period. Anthony looking to not give up an escape here. He wants to ride out Aaron Banco the remainder of this period. Looking for a turn himself. Has a leg in. 
both wrestlers are off the mat. Coach Pat Rizzi very animated over on his side. Referee saying something to him a little bit. Anthony doing a good job still. Very impressed with this freshman thus far. Yes, wrestling a uh, guy with going on his four years, finish up his four years of experience. And he has to be careful right there as Aaron Banker's looking for a switch. He's a little high right now. He knows it, settles back down. About 16 seconds left to go in this period. As he cuts down to that riding time, making it zero. And do bring it to his section, looking to be about four or five seconds. Yes, as we kind of the third period, three to two in favor of the freshman, Anthony Arario. It looks like Aaron Banco will go back on bottom here. Trying to get that quick escape, even things out. Anthony preventing that so far. Starts building his own riding time. Anthony not as lead on top as previous freshman Richie Burke was, but doing a serviceable job. Brian, if you're Heidelberg and this match doesn't go your way, what are you, what are you thinking as a team? Uh, as a team, just come out more aggressive, look for the points early, start fighting for pins, and really getting that, that four to a higher number, more com competing number compared to the 17 that Baldwin Wallace has accumulated. Yes, a win here, and you might think start to think that uh, things are out of reach, but a pin or two, and everything's right back to where we started. And that's not saying that Anthony's going to pull this match out, as there's 55 seconds left to go in this match. He currently leads three to two, as senior Aaron Banco from Heidelberg's hit with stalling, and Anthony has over a minute of writing time now in his favor. Yes, Aaron right now is not really looking, no wonder why he got that stalling call, because he's not really looking for any, any more work underneath. Yeah, Other I, than trying to keep his hands from being controlled, it's he hasn't been fighting for much. Yeah, he hasn't really done a ton to improve on his position, which is, and there we'll restart, the referee will restart the match, calling stalemate. About 20 seconds left to go. A quick escape here, and things would be very interesting the rest of the match. Yeah, this is this is very big for Heidelberg if he can escape. False start on Anthony as he did not have his hands set. Another one of those, and he's giving up a point. As Aaron Banco tried to sit out, Anthony does a good job sucking him back in. And Anthony, excuse me, Aaron Banco just looking for anything at this point. About three seconds left to go. Appears that Anthony Arario is going to get another win to improve his OAC record to three and zero, and his overall record to eighteen and five. Staying undefeated as a freshman, the OAC is a great accomplishment. Yes. So good for Anthony as he goes into the postseason at the 165 weight class. Yes, it is. And now we have senior Garrett Chase out of Erie, Pennsylvania, Cathedral Prep. Garrett is BW's all-time wins leader with 123. The 2015 NCAA Division III All-American is 3-0 against OAC foes and was a first-team All-OAC selection by the league coaches a year ago. As we see the experience has switched, uh, the, the previous two matches, Heidelberg had their two uh, seniors on their lineup, and now we have a senior going against a Heidelberg freshman. Yes, a freshman that's done a pretty decent job so far, going 2-1 and one in the OAC and 7-7 seven seven overall.
Garrett is ranked eighth in Division Three at 174 pounds right now and placed seventh in, at last year's national tournament. Pretty huge accomplishments for somebody as he looks to improve upon those marks this year. Coming off another victory from Ohio Northern last week is uh, definitely a nice step to go into the Heidelberg match that he is currently in now. Team score is now 20 to four in favor of BW. With Heidelberg only getting the one major decision in the 141 pound weight class. Garrett's not the type of wrestler that's going to come out and shoot all around the place. He's going to be very methodical, use good defense, and take down the, put him a, his opponent when it's there, or at least take the shots when they're there. Yeah, it's a very controlled wrestler, making it difficult for his opponents to get points on him. As we see, the uh, Darren is a is the first to wrestle of the two Decker brothers for Heidelberg. His other brother will be wrestling 184 at 100, or at, sorry, at 184 pounds. Both are freshmen. Garrett doing a good job fighting off that single leg. It's under a minute left to go in this first period. BW Bench now giving Anthony Arario his credit, slapping him up as he's coming through. Very excited for the young freshman as they cheer on their teammate Garrett Chase. With 15 seconds left to go in this first period, neither wrestler really distinguishing themselves. But as we said, Garrett very methodical. He knows what he's doing as he looks, reaches for a shot right there. Freshman does a good job of blocking it away with his hands, using that hands head defense. Here's Garrett Chase will be on top this second period. That last match was big for Baldwin Wallace, putting them up 20 to four in the team points. Yes. Very big. That pin by Richie Burke is probably the best thing that could have happened for BW all night. Obviously, pins are huge, but that just came at what felt like the right time. Yes, it did. After coming off the, the previous loss with, with Jake, that pin was definitely big for them. Yeah, and that close match between Joey Schmidt before that. Let Heidelberg have that feeling that they were back in this thing, and that pin, you... Demoralized them almost. Yes. Even, even though there's there's uh, some other matches to come up, that was definitely a uh, a statement made by Baldwin Wallace that you you don't have us on everything. As Garrett Chase pressuring forward on the freshman, building up his riding time, looking for a turn. Garrett doing a good job hooking that foot. When you hook that foot, it's really hard, obviously, to stand up because, I mean, if you want, if Garrett wanted to, he could just put all of his weight on that foot and not allow you to get up. But it also, you can use that to your advantage when you're trying to turn someone as you have that leg right there. As the freshman doing a good job trying to sit out, but Garrett staying with him. Third and a half. Which is difficult right now because that freshman has that one, has Garrett's, Garrett's right leg. foot. Yes. As Garrett's doing a good job and now just preventing the two-point reversal. Chase is trying to get back around, stay on top, not give up anything at this point. And he's right back to where he started, doing a good job fighting off that attempt at a reversal.
About 30 seconds left to go in the second period. Garrett Chase still on top. Has over a minute 30 of riding time. Keeping this one close. 0-0 with 30 seconds left in the second period. Yes, it is. Very surprised by the freshman right now. Not intimidated by BW's all-time win leader, Garrett Chase. And another, uh, another wrestler that's in the top 10 in the country. Yes. All-American from the previous year. Which is Garrett difficult. now looking for a turn. Here that he almost had it, still trying to run it. Freshman just spinning with it, prevent it. Garrett just needs to get that step over. Now he's just trying to lift the face. He should have kept that wrist in his arm behind, but time expires here in the second period. With a two minute advantage of riding time. Garrett getting that quick escape, but not looking to just ride it out with a one point lead and two minutes of riding time. He's looking to build upon that lead by going on his own offensive series and just dominating the mat space, pressuring into his opponent. Stalling. Called on the away team. As Garrett drives his opponent off the uh, off the mat, uh, tension definitely does flare up between the coaches after that. Yeah, Garrett gets a nice little shove there at the end of that. Sometimes when you're on the edge of the mat and, you just, and someone's backing away from you the whole time, your frustrations get to the best of you. Kind of get that extra little shove as the freshman Decker tries to half-hearted attempt at a shot as Garrett reshots. The freshman doing a good job roll through, but Garrett gets the takedown. We can score three to zero with under a minute left in this third period. Not to mention the two minutes and ten seconds of riding time that Garrett has built up through the course of the match. He's now looking for his own turns to build upon that lead, get that major decision or pin. A little late now for a technical fall, probably. Still plenty of time, though, for a couple t quick turns, some back points. But as we approach under 10 seconds here, Pierce Garrett will just ride out on top. Get another win over a pretty impressive freshman, Darren Decker. That was a great fight by the freshman. Going yes. up to such a great senior that yeah. has so much experience and so many wins under his belt. Exactly, Garrett Chase, as we said, All-American, ranked eighth nationally right now in Division Three. That freshman, Darren Decker, was not intimidated at all. No, no not, moral victories, but still exactly. great, great show. Now his brother Dylan Decker will face Ben LeBron from BW in the 184 pound weight class. Brian, why don't you tell us a little bit about Ben? Well, Ben LeBron is a senior wrestling from Strongsville. He's 22 and 16 on the season, undefeated at 3 and 0 in the OAC, and 92 and 60 in his career at Baldwin Wallace, which having 90 wins is, which is is a very hard task at any at any collegiate uh, level. And then Dylan Decker, the freshman, uh, wrestling after his brother at the 184, is 17 and seven this season. Also undefeated in the OAC with four wins and um, no losses. No, yes, no losses. And then 17 and seven as his career because he is a freshman. In their last common opponent match, LeBron beat Mount Union's Connor Rogers 8-3 and Decker beat Rogers 4-1. This will be a big match tonight as both wrestlers fairly solid, just looking for the advantage over the other.
Ben looking to try again early takedown as last week on bottom he was not very good at all as he's ridden out in two whole periods in the second third period approaching under a minute 25 in this first period neither wrestler really has done a ton except for that shot right there by the freshman Decker Ben does a good job sprawling going right to a front headlock And again, the freshman tries to shoot in. Ben blocking it with that head's defense. Under a minute now, Ben and Dylan Decker are still going at it. Neither finding the advantage of the other as they Shot, reshot. Mentality has not worked. Both pressuring in, trying to use their strength, try to create an opening. Neither has been able to do so at this time, though. And again, Vaughn Wallace leads the team score 23 to 4 now. Things looking a little bit out of reach for Hatterberg. But a few pins, and you never know. Ben giving up that takedown right there. Brian, uh, what do you think that means for the freshman Dylan Decker? Uh, I'd say just be a little bit more aggressive because both wrestlers seem just to be timid and trying to feel each other out the this past first period. Um, I'd say keep working his shots. And they'll get there after you just keep working them through and try setting them up more and more. Ben's down right now, down position, excuse me. Dylan Decker trying to get some turns. And as we said last week, Ben LeBron was very porous on bottom. Looking to improve upon that this week as he's currently trailing the freshman 2-0. The freshman looking for a turn right there. Not able to get it. Ben looking for a stand up freshman sucking him back in. The freshman Decker just now clips a minute of riding time, making score technically three to two as the score reads two to zero. Ben gets out and gets a takedown. That could be changed very quickly, however. under a minute now and Decker still doing a good job on top Ben still just like last week not doing a great job on bottom approaching under 30 seconds left and the freshman Decker approaching two minutes of riding time be very tough for Ben to overcome going into a third period. It appears that it'll go that way as there's almost under 10 seconds left. And Ben still has not really done anything on the bottom. Surprised he hasn't been hit with a stalling call. Because it appears, I mean, early when he was down, he made the attempts. But there towards the end of that period, he didn't really do a whole lot on bottom. As now the freshman Decker will go down look to build upon his lead by getting a quick escape. Caution on bottom as he moved a little bit early, but if that's any indication, he is just coming right up. Making Ben try to stop him. Caution on top this time. As Ben started a little early. There both start with out the incident as Ben starts cutting in in that riding time. 
He just needs to get that under a minute. That'll nullify that point. But at the same time, he needs points of his own as he gives up an escape right there. We can score three to zero. Brian, if you're Ben at this point, what are you trying to do? Uh, stay aggressive, as we've been preaching the whole entire uh, the whole entire night. But try to get him down, get some back points, because I mean, he can't take bottom. Whatever it takes, he can't take bottom, because the last period he was pretty much being uh, ridden the whole entire time, which killed him, and which killed him last week as well. There, Ben's trying to go on the offensive as the freshman's backing up and doing a good job of reshotting in on deep again on Ben. Ben cannot give up this takedown and start on bottom. And there he does. Making score five to zero with under a minute left. And just as you're saying, Ben cannot afford to go down as he has not been able to do anything from the bottom position and be able to get up. Potentially dangerous called. One point for Ben LeBron. He needs to take advantage of that. Get a quick escape and then start fighting to get on top and then some back points. Yeah, quick five point move and all of a sudden it's a tied match because of the riding time advantage that Decker has built up. Ben's in a, in a bad position right now with having his. his uh, not having his feet completely underneath him, or his knees, putting him at a vulnerable stage to get mashed down. Yeah, and here he just appears. He's Ben just can't give up any more po give up any more points. As there he gets his escape finally. He needs to work. A little too little too late. It appears he needs to do something right here if he's ever going to do anything. Maybe a gator roll as he's running out of time, and there's the final whistle. Final of that match, six to two, because of riding time in favor of the freshman Dylan uh, Gade, uh, Dylan Decker, excuse me, improving five and zero in the OAC in eighteen and seven career wise. Great win for a freshman, defeating a wrestler for BW that is tied for tenth all time in wins. Yes, yeah, so that is that is a good way to to finish your OAC, OAC run as we go to the 197 with Tyler McClellan, which is a sophomore from Medina that wrestled for CVCA, who is 22 and 14 this season, undefeated at 3-0 and in the OAC, and 38 and 21 in his career. Wrestling against Gage Finnegan, the sophomore, who is 8 and 12 this season, 1 and 2 in the OAC. Looking for an interesting fight between these two sophomores. Yes. There's a lot of action for 197 pound weight class so far. Tyler did a good job at controlling Matt's space last week. Just going into his opponent, making his opponent back up the entire match. Eventually giving up some, his opponent giving up some stalling calls. And again, Tyler looks to be doing much of the same as just pressuring in to his opponent. Pushing him forward. But his opponent, Gage Finnegan, doing a good job at mixing some shots in there, fighting in his own way. That was a quick stalling call. I was not expecting that. Stalling on Tyler McClellan. And has to be careful there. Once you're hit with stalling, he stepped right back at the start of that whistle. And sometimes referees see that and they'll hit you again right away. Which is kind of surprising with this referee because as we saw last match, he wasn't too eager to give a stalling call for um, for Ben as he was on bottom, but um, right. did not hesitate to give it in the first two minutes of this period. Exactly, as I thought Tyler was the one pressuring in to his opponent most match and controlling match space. Which he did last week as well. Exactly. Maybe it's because he hasn't really been working any shots. He's been trying to get that snap down while his opponent, Gage Finnegan, has been trying to throw some shots in there, some moves. 
Nothing able to flow though. Both wrestlers seem pretty evenly matched right now. Tyler though, undefeated in the OEC at three and zero, while Gage Finnegan is one and two. Again, the freshman, I mean, the, excuse me, the sophomore, Finnegan, looking for those shots on his ankles as we're approaching 10 seconds left in this first period. There, the first period ends as McClellan signals for the referee something's wrong with his eye. Maybe his headgear is in his eye or something. I'm not really sure. Appears he's fine, though, as he's going bottom in the second period. As a BW leads a team score 23-7. to seven. And yeah. the Piers will be taking team point wins no matter – the team win no matter what at this point as it's too little too late for Heidelberg to come back. Charles started off with that pin with the yes. freshman. Yes, that was a huge – turning point, not turning point, but huge point in the match as BW was winning, but Heidelberg starting to get back into it after a close match and then a win of their own. McClellan got that quick escape, looking for his own offense at this point. Has to be careful though, he's not hit with another stalling, give up point. Finnegan's trying to use uh, Tyler's weight to his advantage by pulling him through and and uh, also pulling him down trying to get shots on him. Exactly. Which Tyler needs to be careful. Good with. point there, Brian. Again, Ty Tyler has a really weird mentality on neutral. He crosses his feet a lot. He does pressure forward the entire time, which some people, like you were saying, pull you in and use that. But here, apparently it works as he gets a takedown. He can score three to nothing. But as I was saying, a lot of time when you're neutral and you cross your feet, you're in a bad position as you don't have any balance. And people usually take advantage of that, mm -hmm. get a couple shots in. Yeah, you lose a lot of your um, your balance and your power by crossing your feet. Exactly. As McClellan looking to build a little bit of riding time. He won't get enough for a minute, but if he stays on top, he'll be close. And you have to assume that freshman Gage Finnegan will go bottom this next period. As the second period comes to a end, and I'm wrong, Finnegan will go neutral. I'm calling it accumulated 37 seconds of riding time right there at the end. And there's another takedown by McClellan doing the snap down spin. Great job building that team lead. He's gonna kick him. He's now he's gonna look to build upon that lead, giving up a point. Just try to get another major. Maybe look for a takedown to the back. Which we've seen Tyler, what we were saying before, giving all that pressure with that snap down. That pressure opens that snap down up even more as the uh, as Finnegan pressures back. Tyler just waits to, to set up that snap down and, and really takes advantage of it while it's there. Exactly. As McClellan looking to build upon his lead. Again, and again, he's crossing his feet on neutral. Very unorthodox, unorthodox, excuse me, for someone to do. It, is wor it, it has worked for him so far. That's his niche, being undefeated in the OC. And with a 22-14 and 14, uh, season record, Sophomore Finnegan coming in with arms spread eagle, which is very easy to fend. A lot of times people can come up underneath, get an underhook. Surprised that he's not a little bit under, more under control, keep his arms in. We currently have a score of five to one as we hit 
45 seconds left in this one. With McCullen having 46 seconds of riding time right now. Not enough to make a difference, but certainly there. As Finnegan looking for a shot still. Tyler doing a good job fighting it off. Both wrestlers have been warned for stalling once, at least once, excuse me. Tyler just stalking Finnegan as Finnegan was trying to create a little bit of distance after almost giving up a takedown. As there's under 10 seconds left, you hear the fans clapping. As BW just increases on its lead even more. Looking very much like a nationally ranked team. As we get into the heavyweights, we got Big Joe Belford, the senior from Berea, wrestled for St. Edwards, the um, prestigious program that's right down the road, accumulating a 22 and 14 season record, undefeated at 2 and 0 in the OAC and 68 and 51 in his career, going in against John Eckroth, the junior, who is 11 and 9 this season and 2 and 1 in the OAC. Should be a pretty good match right now as BW has guaranteed their team win. Big Joe and John Eckroff just stay in the middle of the mat, both using their upper body weight and the strength as most heavyweights do. Yeah, they're a bit, a little bit less active as uh, compared to the 133s. Exactly. Both just working out of the color tie right now. Just looking for something. Again, BW leads team score 26 to 7 over the student princes of Heidelberg. Both wrestlers getting a little physical right there, Brian. Yeah. Joe being very vicious with his hands, pulling his head through, his Isn't opponent's it? head through. Exactly. Both using their foreheads as weapons and trying to rub the other one. Just control and dominate, enforce their will on the other. Joe doing a good job. It, it seems to be Joe's doing the more controlling on top well, with his heavy hands than Ekroff is. But neither wrestler has a clear advantage of the other. And again, if BW wins a team score tonight, it is his first outright OAC wrestling title since 1973. As they currently lead 26-7, to Joe almost able to get in on a shot right there. It will snap down. Eckroth, and for heavyweights, once you get someone down on their knees and the other one on top of you, that's a lot of weight on somebody. Under 15 seconds now. Still 0-0 zero, zero in this match. Both staying in the center of the mat for the most part. Joe able reaching down for a leg right there. Not able to get anything as there's under a second left now. Joe's looking to get his like stay undefeated this this season as an OAC wrestler and make and improve to 23 and 14 as a 69 and 51 overall record. Which is great to see again from another senior that has done a great job leading this team to be as successful as it has this year and be a part of what they were last year as a junior and show the freshmen what uh, what a successful program, what it takes to stay successful. Joe's hit with stalling now. As he's there he kicks out Ekroff as Ekroff stands up, but Joe didn't really let go. It was a quick stalling call, I thought, maybe from that position. But some 
usually when someone stands up and you just get your arms around them, the referees will do that a lot. But a lot of times, referees are a little bit more uh, lenient for heavyweights as they know that they can't move fast or use their strength when someone the same weight is on top of them trying to keep them down. Yes, this referee's been a little bit uh, unpredictable when it comes to the stalling calls tonight. Yeah, I was just thinking the same thing, Brian. Here again, Joe looking for a duck under shot. There he has an underhook. See if he can use that to his advantage. And anytime someone has an underhook, that means the other one has an overhook. And it just depends on who's able to get that leverage. Because both give up on those over and under hooks. And again, just start rubbing foreheads. As we get under 30 seconds here in this second period, Joe Belford is losing 1-0 to zero after giving up that escape. Joe trying to snap down Belford. Not quite able to, neither quite getting what they want, being maybe a little frustrated. But it appears Joe's been the one doing a lot of the work on neutral. And Ekroff has not been hit with a stalling call yet. No, the only advantage is, is Ekroff really having that escape. Have some more blood or injury time. Right now, Brian, what do you think Joe has to do besides get that escape? I mean, neither's really been able to do from the neutral position. Riding time is not a factor currently. I mean, it, 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 it is uh, uh, difficult to say with these heavyweights, you know. you got to take advantage of opportunities that are presented. And, um, I mean, staying aggressive throughout the match is definitely necessary. He's been aggressive as it is compared to his opponent, Ekroth. And this escape right here will definitely be huge, yes. yes. Change, change everything. Again, Joe's been hit with stalling once. The warning... Anytime after that, he's giving up points. There, Joe and Belfort. It. Quick escape. As Joe Belfort is looking to take control of this match, get his own takedown here. Looks like what they showed in Joe's nose to stop the bleeding fell out, but he's not bleeding anymore. So the match will continue. Joe in on a shot. Love to see big man shoot. Joe needs to keep him in. Oh, he gives up the leg here. Oh, that student section loved it with, at that time, uh, less than a minute 30 left. Yes. His, you can hear him chanting, Joe. Yes, the fans, the students. All the wrestlers on BW roster really getting into it right now. And even the Heidelberg fans were excited when uh, Ekroff was able to get his leg out of that because it appeared Joe was just going to be able to take him down. Under a minute now. Score is one to one. Joe really needed to finish that takedown. That would have been huge. Joe, I'm thinking maybe he goes for a fake tie up here and goes for a shot. As we're getting under close to 30 seconds. Be kind of interesting if the final match tonight went into overtime, Brian. Yep. We'd love to see Joe to get a takedown. Oh, nice shot right there. Again, Ekroff has not been hit with stalling as he's not really done a whole lot from the neutral position. No, that was just right there, I think, was his first move. 
from the neutral position. I mean, yeah, he's just been defending. Thus, he should be hit with stalling at some point. Five seconds left. Joe still shooting. Ekroff tried that reshot, not quite there. And we go into overtime. Overtime is minute sudden death. First, as soon as you someone gets a takedown, it is over. Which Joe's aggressiveness should definitely come to play on this yeah, one. Yeah, but as you saw right there, Brian, sometimes that reshot after Joe shoots is there. Mm -hmm. Joe a little bit slower now, taking his time, being methodical. Appears Joe outweighs Ekroth. Maybe he's trying to use that to his advantage. And as we know, Joe is a very strong man. I'm not saying Ekroth is not, but I've seen Joe Belford lift, and it's very impressive. He's just trying to use that strength. He's done a great job just trying to wear down Ekroth. As there's 19 seconds left to go in this first overtime. Joe just pressuring in. As he tries to duck under, shot didn't work. Under two seconds left to go. About to go into the next two overtimes. Heidelberg will choose down this first time. Joe just needs to ride him out for 30 seconds. Very surprising. Because usually heavyweights, it's easier to... As he tries to roll out Ekroff, and Joe does a good job defending it. He cannot... Ekroff doing a great job. He dares the escape. Next overtime, there's automatically two overtimes in this set. Both will have a chance to be bottom and top. It's big right now if Joe can get him down and get... If Joe gets a takedown here soon... It appears that neither is really looking for a takedown right now. Just content to go in this next one where Joe Belford will be on bottom look for a quick escape maybe a two point move I don't know you have 30 seconds what a great match to end the night on Brian yes it is yes it student is student section loves it Joe looking for a quick stand up there's the out. escape keeping it tied right now 2-2 two -two. Less than 20 seconds left to go in this one. This will have no effect on the team scores. BW's already scored way too many points. The fans just want to see the senior go out on top. And it looks like we'll be going into another sudden death. One minute overtime. Joe fighting to keep his OAC record unscathed. And John to go off and in going into his senior year with an OEC win. Yeah, junior versus senior right here, so you know they've seen each other before. Ekroff's 11 and 9 record is very deceiving. Again, both wrestlers just working out that collar tie. Joe looking for that. Right sweep on belt on Ekros left leg. Joe's done a great job with staying lower than his opponent. This yes, he does. Entire match. Maybe Joe needs to fake go going to his right and go to his left, or maybe hit a high crotch on the other leg. With about 20 seconds left to go in this second one minute sun death overtime. Under 10 seconds now. Both wrestlers just pressuring into each other. And we'll go into the next overtime. Seems as though Joe's going to be taking bottom. Joe will be on bottom expected. this time, yes. And the way both of these heavyweights have been on bottom, neither have been able to hold each other down. Ekroth this time does a good job at spiral riding Joe down. 
Joe has 23 seconds to stand up now. 20, under 15 seconds now. Joe needs to stand up. 10 seconds. Eckroft doing a great job. He has five seconds to get away. But Eckroft pulls him back down the mat. Great job by Eckroft. Now Eckroft will be down. Joe will have to hold him down for his 30 seconds. Coach Gibbs maybe talking to Joe about maybe going neutral, kicking him, giving up the one, look for that quick takedown, but Joe instead will go on top, give up that escape. Joe needs to get a quick takedown, and he does, and there's a two. Great shot by Joe. Making it 4-3. He needs, Giving and he gives the kick escape. out. Joe again will have to get another takedown here as the score is tied up at 4-4 again. <laughs> what a crazy set of overtime. As we've been saying, great way to end the night. Such a great, great Everyone match. in the gym is excited. What a great match. These guys neither can give an inch. Heckroth doing a great job at holding Joe down. As Eckroff gets the win because of his 16 seconds of riding time. Decision because of the riding time. Due to riding time. What a great match between Joe Belford and John Eckroff. Joe going to 2 and 1 in the OAC. Eckroff going 3 and 1. Your final tonight is Baldwin Wallace University Yellow Jackets 26. And the Heidelberg student prince is 10. Excuse. BW is now has a single season school record, 18 wins this season, and is 18 and 8 overall. For the first time since 1973, the Yellow Jackets win an outright OAC title in wrestling with their perfect 5 0 record in dual matches. With its loss, Heidelberg is now 6-11 overall and 2-3 and in the OAC. Great, great win for Baldwin Wallace, taking the title, setting the seniors out right when the OAC as they head into the postseason with a win, 29-7. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight the 19th ranked Baldwin Wallace University wrestling team has won the 2016 OVC uh, wrestling title with 18 and 8 overall, as we said, and a perfect 5 and 0 record in the OAC, which is a great for them. The 18 wins has also reestablished the single, single season school record for victories. Last year, BW had 17 wins and only five losses. Great job, boys! Congratulations to head coach Jamie Gibbs and his coaching staff. They're eight outstanding senior wrestlers and the rest of this fine Yellow Jacket team. Also, congratulations to both BW Athletic support staff, the parents of our wrestlers, and you, the fans, for supporting this outstanding team. BW is the 2016 OAC Wrestling Champion. Again, your final tonight is BW Yellow Jackets 26, your student prince, Heidelberg student prince is 10. Thank you for tuning in tonight and listening to BW win their first outright team championship since 1973. We wish you a good night.